By the end of the Williamite War, the Irish were truly a conquered people and British parliamentary policy was to treat Ireland as a colony which should never be allowed to compete with Britain's commercial interests. By 1703, Catholics who made up approximately 90% of the population owned little more than 10% of the land. This outrageously unjust division of the country was so resented that the Protestant landowners lived in constant fear of native uprising. With blatant disregard for the terms of the Treaty of Limerick, a succession of penal or popery laws were introduced between 1695 and 1729. These were aimed at ending the religious, political and economic freedoms of all Catholics and to a lesser extent of Presbyterians and other non-Anglican sects, collectively known as dissenters. To render the Irish totally powerless, Catholics were forbidden, often on pain of death, to practice their religion, own land, be educated, speak or read Gaelic, play Irish music or even wear the colour green. Although similarly draconian laws were used in other parts of Europe to crush minority religious sects, nowhere else were they used to suppress the culture and beliefs of a majority. There is no instance, wrote the esteemed Dr. Samuel Johnson, of such severity as that which the Protestants of Ireland exercised against the Catholics. Even the eminent Protestant historian Lecky noted that the penal laws were the instrument of a conquering race to crush to the dust the people among whom they were planted in defiance of a treaty which distinctly guaranteed the Irish Catholics from any further oppression on account of their religion. It may be justly regarded as one of the blackest pages in the history of persecution. As the laws came into force, the peasantry of Ireland were reduced to a state of utter wretchedness. Yet for all their suppression, the people's spirit was never completely broken. Clandestine mass rocks, or Caracanafrin, where the sacrament could secretly be celebrated in remote countryside locations and hedge schools where brave teachers passed on their knowledge out of sight of the authorities became common features of every Irish townland. 